what could only be described as a Chad team comp. The the Futsu, the, the Chao, the Guan Yu, and then obviously the Lunar as well. Obviously Princess Frost being a fantastic utility mage as well. Just being able to lock down those team fights and just do so much damage um, in the meantime as well. Just kind of using that at high attack speed. It's going to be really interesting to see if we... Uh, Maggie doesn't really want to join fights earlier on anyways. He wants to get his farm up towards the late game. That's the that's a lane for you. He wants to get towards the mid game stage with a decent amount of farm and then just really start to uh, cause havoc later on. But here, yep, trying to put pressure. Princess oh. Frost drops the ultimate. Uh, bottom lane. Yep, that's zone. Angela in trouble. Oh. Okay. Danny coming through. Good trade. It was a trade. Yep, yeah, it was a trade for the uh, Futsu down in the bot lane, but taking Dragon down as well, especially with the Blazing Brilliance. That could have gone horrible for the side of EKS because we know how much damage that ultimate can do. And especially if you manage to like hit one of the other abilities of Angela, it just does even more damage. So again, I think of EKS are very lucky just to walk away with that 1-1 one -one trade, to be honest, but they aren't lucky in the regards that they have lost the Tyrant. Uh, first turret of the game of going over to Boom Esports and a pressure being put on here oh. to BKS Danny when he tried to invade. Look at him smashing those Danny. buttons away. That's the first time we've seen that one. There he is. He's just trying his best to try and close the gap on this Overlord for himself because they don't want to be walking away with none of the first round of jungle objectives. Yeah, Danny, off to a great start, managed to steal away the rip buff from the Dun. So that's going to allow him to really progress towards the mid-game stage, uh, mid stage of the game. He's probably already in a probably top of the network. Who's uh, has fallen once again? A lot of uh, focus has been put by Boom on towards the mid lane. Angela not gonna connect on his skills. Danny a little bit too fast, a little bit too mo mobile to land uh, those skill shots without any sort of prior setup. Yeah, I feel like Boom Esports is probably one of the teams that know how to get play against this Futsu. Like you were saying, Zero, is that Angela's spending a lot of her time down in the bot lane and they've already lost their first tier turret as well. And normally, if that was the case with All Gamers Global, they were able to uh, put the pressure on in the side lanes with Futsu and the Chao, but it's just not taking um, the same, it's not just aboding the same way this time around because you've not only got Angela rotating around, you've got a lane, so Miji coming from the teleport of the Clash lane all the way down to the farm lane just to stop those side lane aggressions and they're playing against it beautifully well. This is something that I feel like R8, if they watch this, is going to be a huge learning thing for them if they ever encounter this uh, combo again, but there's the knock up onto the teleport there he goes outside of the teleport because he feels like he needs to save the the show but that could have been the cost of his own life yeah but like thankfully Fuzi is not very squishy he can still sustain damage all by himself so here four heroes from the side uh boom is trying to take this top tier one tower trying mm. to fight back Fuzi was there the other the, the pops drops the teleport but doesn't get used to your silence done towards the back line here comes the Dacia Ultima getting everybody in towards the fight. They're gonna isolate the Dun and Dun. Oh no, the teleport sent back. They're gonna reduce the damage. No, Dun is still alive. That's a Jesus really surviving through all of that and uh, not losing anyone in the process. Very well done there by Boom. Able to get everybody out and that leaves a lane towards the bottom lane. Able to continue to put pressure on that bottom tier two tower. Imagine Dun going straight into the front line. Taking so much damage and you're not getting the kill onto him. I mean, if I was VKS, I'd be super, super like disappointed in that whole interaction. Just nothing came over to you. Um, but again, I think this is the problem when you have it done, and especially on such an experienced player like Ejizix, um on the side of Boom Esports, they're just able to know how to navigate this hero, even though, yes, we always say he's quite a lackluster jungler, but He's proving his function in these fights because they have no other tank other than the Dun. Yes, they have a second engage like the Elaine, a very assassin brawler type, uh, CC immunity as well, just to sort of like cut through anything that's uh, initially going to stop him. But Dun just being your solid front line and being able to tank so much damage is just showing the, the capability of this hero is nuts. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, the G6 definitely is uh, sh showcasing what a Dun can actually do. 
not many players can actually do that. And you know, Dunn's not a not a hard hero. He he looks very simple with yep. his kid. Oh, Luna trying to fight back. Oh, and Toshi actually takes the man fight towards Danny, and he loses. Impressive does fall, but they will take that trade anytime, oh. any day. Toshi might be in some trouble. One you will lock him back. Can uh -oh. he get the fight? Uh -oh. Can he get the kill? Oh, Teleport. No, Toshi gets away the safety. <laughs> Oh wow! The loose tape coming through and literally clutching it there for uh, Toshi. He was able to get out of that whole interaction. I thought he was a gunner when Guan Yu was on the way around, making his rounds and rotating very aggressively. But again, that was a 1-1 uh, trade, I believe it was, between T uh, Danny going down and then obviously they did take down Impressive, but didn't quite manage to close the gap onto uh, Toshi because of the... Uh, the leaf step on the Arley, which is obviously a great way to get out of those sticky situations like we just saw. Yeah, that, definitely very well done there by, by Toshi. Able to survive through all that bottom lane. Maggie's still alive uh, on the Elaine. He's been farming the entire time they were clashing up in the top, and he's already level 12 right now. So this Elaine is going to head towards the mid game. Very farm, very scary. Toshi brings the Tyrant down for the side of Boom, and they are having a 500 goal lead. Not the biggest of leads so far, but it definitely doesn't feel like that. It feels like you know, VKS is in a much more precarious position. Yeah, I mean, in terms of goal, again, it's not the worst thing that could be happening at the 10 minute mark. They're only like a K behind, but again, it's just also close to teleport coming through. Guan Yu coming down and actually managing to take down the Ali as well. Are we going to get another kill here? He's back of the queue onto the Sunbin, dodges the Angela CC as well, but nothing else is going to come out of that team fight but that was a solid 1-0 trade there Guan Yu coming through that teleport that is not one hero you want to be seeing and that horse all up in your face when you realize there was no horse there to begin with and then all of a sudden it's like oh yep I didn't order that that was a drop ship that I did not want to be seeing yep, Dragon almost got uh, nuked down there by Danny with one single combination but uh, managing to survive for now. The Tyrant respawns down to half health already. Danny continuing going for impressive. Getting the kill, not yet. The Silence coming true. He's gonna get the kill. But Angela damage way too much. Danny falls once again. But so does Elaine. The Gunny was able to bring down the Elaine up towards the top lane. But this opens up the Tyrant for Boom to try and take a fight because they know that the Guan Yu isn't here. He's not here for the fight. Is there an ultimate coming from the the the, 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 the oh. Yes, there is. And here comes back up. One dropping very low. He's trying to get a kill onto his dragon. Dragon managed to survive. Toshi oh. giving chase. One more right click onto his one. will finish him up, but not enough. Oh. Toshi will fall and looks like the Dunn is in trouble as well. Toshi will not be able to get anything out of there. Oh, oh my what? gosh. This Dunn <laughs> is still fighting back, still alive. Puts up the shield. He has his ultimate, but here comes back up. Knocking back him back in. And he's going to fall finally towards the end. Jeez, man, that Dunn was holding on for his life. Like, we thought his health was getting so low, and then all of a sudden it was like, boop, and then shield, and then it was going all the way down again, and then they managed to take him out. But my gosh, what, like, the effort you have to go through to just eliminate such a simple hero is crazy. Um, but I think that's going to put uh, VKS into a better spot than they were literally a minute ago. Um, now that they're ahead of the gold as well, not by a country mile, but it's still a little bit, uh, which is always better to be ahead than behind. Uh, obviously, within this game, they are able to take some of the side turrets as well. That mid turret, however, is still up and looking very healthy right now. They were able to take the, uh, the Shadow Tyrant as well. Uh, not too sure that they're going to go and get the Shadow Overlord just yet because of that Primal Bomb. Silence does miss from uh, Impressive, so that means that Boom has to back off. They can't really take the fight for now. Guan Yu is pushing up towards the top lane. They will rotate a lane over there. Guan Yu, not the easiest of heroes to gank. They, they don't know where he is as well. And yet, playing very well on this Guan Yu. Oh, they, caught, they catch him out. And G6 is caught out. Can he survive this? How long can he stay here? He's still alive. He will fall only towards the back line. Trying to knock everybody out. Does get a three-man knockup. But where's the follow-up? Silence coming through. Angela, not going to be enough. Ultimate coming from the Angela. And still, everybody's still alive. But Arli is here. And Arli wants to clean up. Oh, Arli taking a lot of damage there from Niab. Toshi has to watch out. Oh, Angela with the snipe getting Guan Yu down. And the 2-4-3 trade goes towards the favor of Boom. 
Yeah, what looked like a promising engage there for VKS definitely turned around thanks to uh, Toshi there on the Arley. It was just sort of like, okay, that kind of just, I wasn't expecting that to come through and just do so much damage. But then, to be honest, Arley's just been buffed as well. So I believe it's her uh, attack damage, base attack damage has been buffed. And then obviously there is uh, a buff on one of her skills as well. Um, I believe it's to do with max damage also. But um, again, this was a farm lane hero that was pretty much always contested in these tournaments and this time around mm -hmm. in day one we've seen this hero being banned we've seen it being picked up once or twice but i see i think this is a reason why she needs to be banned because in the right hands like on Toshi or even on jr it's a lethal pick but once again a huge teleport coming in here can they survive long enough because there's no done to focus on all that damage so again there is uh, no teleport coming through it was just a little bit of a what seems like a bait on the side of vks we did see elaine trying to knock them out of the teleport very good attempt but ultimately was just not enough to uh to stop them from teleporting all the way back to base so all that effort gone to nothing still a 1000 net worth lead being taken there by boom angela ultimate not gonna finish off the uh not gonna finish off mana and they're gonna be able to be happy be glad content with just taking away the jungle and also taking the top tier two towers yeah, a bit of an interesting situation that's going on in the team here. Obviously, VKS have traded the second tier turrets in the clash lane for potentially the one down in the farm lane, and they're able to do it. Guan Yu and Luna is still in that lane, um, but Elaine and Angela are looking for a rotation as well. Dune potentially coming through here. Um, oh, yep, there we go. Linked straight on to Danny, but... Again, Guan Yu going in for the backline knockup, both onto the Angela and onto the uh, the Arlie that was locked down, but still able to do so much damage within that team fight. What is going on, Fusu? Fusu going back there as well. I mean, that was a lifeline from the Chao. The fact that it was able to get out of there was probably a hell mary for uh, Fusu in that whole interaction. It was just. Absolutely. <laughs> the VKS is just, I'm speechless, man. It seems like their engages are going to go in the way of VKS, but then all of a sudden it's like, mm, Toshi come through and we'll win. <laughs> I, I, I thought Toshi was dead from that engagement. I thought there was no way he was going to be able to get out of the, out of Fuzi's ultimate, but somehow he survived through the life steals, through, just, through the damage he was just dealing, just standing there and managing to just outlive that five seconds where he's just rooted on the spot. So very well done there by Toshio, top lane. Danny trying to run away. He does still have his combo. He can continue chasing a lane, drops the ultimate to try and give chase. Danny is done running. I want to fight. Where's the backup? Backup's a bit too far for now. And uh, the recall from uh, from the ultimate of Dachao gets Danny out to safety. Yeah, no, that was definitely not the 1v1 you want to be uh, committing on there, especially with some Mim rotating in the rain, because as soon as that turns into a 2v1, uh, it'd be uh, the slim chance of Danny getting out of that one alive. So again, the Chow playing um, not quite the same way as all gamers global did. It's more of a lifeline sort of support pick here, whereas uh, on all gamers global, there was a... Uh, it just it was just a relentless uh, with that combo again just not quite used the same way on VKS but I suppose that's down to the lack of exposure against such a great combo for a great team as well uh, Luna looking to still push this uh, higher ground turret here in the farm lane while she's away from that overlord she's got to be careful because if they're able to pick it up they can just nullify that minion wave in the farm lane and you've just pushed for no reason and potentially your teammates going down here. So I feel like Danny needs to start focusing and playing around these jungle objectives a little bit more because uh, Boom Esports are currently ahead with the jungle objectives. Yep, so you have to make sure they don't lose this. At G6 is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, all stuck alone. Princess Frost ultimate drop. The silence does come true. He's still alive, still fighting. He's still in the back line, surviving through all of that. Still alive, and no one's bringing him down as of yet. The shield comes out, a lane towards the back line, doing so much damage. Ooh. He's taking too much damage on his own as well. The shield does come out. He's trying to survive. He does not have his ultimate anymore. But VKS not able to bring anybody down. They had, did have to teleport the Princess Frost all the way back to base. But 
in the end. It was all for naught on both ends. Nobody falls. But does that mean that Toshi will be able to bring down this Overlord? It might just be enough. Yeah, I feel like there's way more damage on the side of uh, Boom Esports here. They have the Angela, they have Arlie, and then obviously to set it all off, they just have done tanking all that, uh, Dune taking all that damage, it seems. Uh, but then on the side of VKS, it's kind of like these heroes, like the Guan Yu, like the Luna, have to get in there, do the damage, and then get out. But they have a, such a short uh, life, uh, shelf life in those team fights because if they don't do it within a certain time, they just know that Ali or Angela is going to come through and just clean up because as soon as Dune is in the interaction, it's going to be a lot harder. Absolutely, and I mean, I'm impressed by Ajizik so far, making the Dun look like, like a tier 1 hero. Um, just being able to soak out all that damage. Sure, he's not doing a lot of damage on his own, but the, but the focus that he's been able to attract to himself has definitely allow the boom esports to play a lot more aggressively how they want whenever they want and they get the bottom tier 3 tower for themselves yeah i mean this could be again another curtain call here for vks they are ahead of the kills so they were last game but uh, that's without the afida on the enemy team uh, <laughs> but i just feel like boom this is just a even though we've gone for flashier picks on vks it it's not really served much in terms of when we have these huge fights because D uh, Dune is able to just soak up so much damage and then once he's done soaking all that up, you've then got the death on sunset come through and then by the time that comes around, Toshi's there just wiping out these low health heroes on the side of VKS and it's happened multiple mm -hmm. times but the past two interactions have been really rare that nobody's died. So again, You've been going a fall, uh, bashing your basic attack buttons, spamming your spells, but then nobody dying. Just seems like one of those sort of like mental booms that you'd go through. It's like, oh, come on, man. Surely <laughs> we could have got somebody in that whole fight, but the fact that they got the chow, they're able to send people back, and then people are back in. But again, I don't think it's been as effortless as uh, All Gamers uh, Global um, uh, rendition on this duo. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Danny, 17,000 net worth at the moment. It doesn't feel like he has 17,000 net worth. It feels like mm. he's not have a, had a great game. But despite all of that, you know, it's just Boom really itemizing very well. They're all bringing uh, the magic resistance cloak, reducing the damage that Danny can really bring to the table and uh, making them a little bit more survivable, which makes uh, Danny's life very, very interesting because he cannot stay in these fights for too long. He can, he, Luna's not a tanky jungler. He's he wants to go in, get a kill, get out, and with those proper itemizations, Danny can't really do that. But what is it towards the end of the day? What are they having in their food? I mean, this is the second time <laughs> we've had a Tempest Dragon, and it's always the last two games of the day. What is going on? Uh, hopefully it doesn't last as long as uh, Osiris and uh, Team Secret, but it seems to be a, a little bit of a running theme between the Argentinian teams and the Brazilian teams. They like to go to the late game, but they also like to fumble the late game as well. But hopefully VKS can break that curse, but it looks like Boom Esports are going to be able to lock down this Tempest. Dragon, are they going to go oh, for no. the steel? Crucial fair from uh, one coming through. Okay. Well played there by VKS, taking up the Tempest Dragon. We are seeing a few kills left, right, and center. Even the Chow is getting the kill on the board there onto the Dune. And we are going to see the Elaine looking to go down as well. Luna taking down the Elaine. Is this VKS come back right now? The Fuzu was just saved there by the Dachau, and that allowed them to, you know, really turn the fight, turn the fight around, not giving any single kill. The huge steal coming from Princess Frost as well definitely gives them an out for the moment. And if you look at the net worth, it's basically even right now, but VKS mm. does have the dragons to push out the silence for them so that they can just focus on towards the mid. Yeah, I think that's all they really need to do. I mean, if anything, they want to try and take these high ground turrets whilst the likes of the Elaine and the Dune are down and are currently on their death spawner. But again, that's just something that they either can do or can't do. But it looks like they were able to take that high ground turret in the clash lane. 
Whether they can do exactly the same thing in the farm lane is yet to be seen. But still, that mid lane is still looking pretty healthy. Hopefully, they can still try and secure one of these second tier turrets just so they can get a little bit closer to the crystal. And uh, I think that's why Boom Esports allowed them, if, any, if they did allow them to have that... Um, interaction go their way uh, the last one we just saw but it doesn't look like it it looks like they're here to clean the house here with all the higher ground turrets almost being down the mid one still standing they still have a tempest dragon vanguard here in the mid lane as well and they're here to clean up shop are they going to be able to just have a team fight where they can wipe or at least take down three of Boom Esports and then just push for the crystal. But there's that death on Sunset onto uh, one there. They are trying to take out Princess Frost, so there is no more Winters coming here. But Dachau puts down the teleport as well. Princess Frost getting the kill onto the Elaine. We see that the Tempest Dragon Vanguard is taking the crystal as well. We saw some damage going up to the crystal, but they have decided to focus the team fight as well. Danny taking down Toshi. They are looking to give some revenge to Boom Esports. BKS are not going down with out of fight uh, dodging out Angela's abilities there but they're still not closing the game they have to wait what is going on zero are they gonna be able to close this now Danny is looking to focus the crystal and they get a game one win from uh, boom esports VKS are not down yet that was way too close for comfort there for the side of